Welcome back to Patriot Network TV. I want to visit with you for a few minutes today about a speech given by the President of the United States yesterday. The President of the United States came forward yesterday and said in very stark, harsh terms, many things that were not true. First of all, the President of the United States said that the United States as a country, as an idea, as a concept, has never worked. That was his phrase, it has never worked. He further said that rugged individualism, the myth of the rugged individualist, was contrary to what would work. And what we need is not limited government as envisioned by the Founding Fathers, not a limited government that had specific powers that were written in the Constitution and were balanced between the three branches of government. No, 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 no. What we need is unlimited federal power, much higher taxes, and much more control on day-to-day -day life of individual Americans by federal government bureaucrats, or bureaucrats at every level for that matter. But what we've got going on here, to uh, borrow the phrase from my old uh, buddy Fritz Hollins, there's just too much freedom going on here. People are free to fail and they're free to succeed and by God, we don't like that. The President of the United States made a unilateral attack on the ideal of America. He made a unilateral attack on the ideal of freedom. He made a unilateral attack on the very notion of what our nation is. He made a unilateral attack on the concepts expressed in the Declaration of Independence that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are endowed with certain inalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those rights are endowed to me by my creator, not by the federal government, not by President Obama, not by the U.S. Supreme Court. I am endowed with certain inalienable rights and they come from the creator of the universe. They come from God Almighty and they inhere in me. Well, the president's speech yesterday, which was disturbing on a number of levels, not the least of which was how many falsehoods he, statistical falsehoods, historic falsehoods, he spoke. The essence of the speech was to basically, and this is no surprise if you followed the president, the president of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, hates America and he hates the system of capitalism, he hates free enterprise, he hates the fact that people have the ability to succeed or fail based on how hard they work. He despises every part of this country and for that matter so does his wife. And you can reference her comments about I've never been proud of this country until my husband was elected. Well, the fruition of this hateful, resentful, small-minded, bigoted attitude on the part of the president was this speech that he gave yesterday. And it is critical for average Americans, for people like me, to understand how deeply the president of the United States resents me. And as a member of the middle class, you can't be more middle class than I am. I'm a teacher, my wife's a nurse. We are solid middle class citizens of the United States of America. And we represent middle class not only by our occupational status, teacher, nurse, you know, wife's a registered nurse at a geriatric facility, I teach at a community college. You can't be more middle class than we are. I deeply resent the President of the United States telling me that to make the middle class whole, comma, again, he has to rescind the promise of freedom, the promise of a limited government, the promise of defined powers of a limited government. The President of the United States made a speech yesterday that was so frightening, so dishonest, and so disappointing that I feel absolutely obligated to answer, not point by point, but in a very general sense, his allegation. His allegation that this country's never worked is false. We founded a country on the basis of a ideal, of an ideal. The ideal is that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, among those life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To allow people to pursue those inalienable rights, we set up a limited government that derives its just powers from the consent of the governed. And there are limits to the amount of taxation, the amount of control, the amount of interference that the federal, state, and local government can exercise in the lives of free people, us. The idea that taxes have to be raised, the power to tax, as the US Supreme Court once wrote, is the power to destroy. In 
The years directly before, in 1937, 1938, the number of people paying federal income tax in the United States was 5%. By 1944, 65% paid federal income tax. In World War II, the top marginal tax rate was 94%. Everyone who made over $200,000 paid 94%. So when you went from $200,000 to $300,000, you got to keep $6,000 and $94,000 went to the federal government. That's slavery. That's not freedom. There is no way to justify that argument. The country that Barack Hussein Obama envisions is not America. It's not our Constitution. It's not our Declaration of Independence. It is a failed model of socialism, just look to Greece, to Portugal, to Italy, and you'll see exactly what the president wishes to push on us. Now, he has been very cagey in not saying it out loud until yesterday. His speech yesterday should clarify for anyone who is on the fence that what he envisions for this country is not freedom, not individualism, not a government of limited, specific powers that are written in the U.S. Constitution. His vision for America is people who are weak, ineffectual, and have to be from cradle to grave nurtured by the nanny state. I pray that you will vote in 2012, in November 2012, you must vote against President Obama, you must vote against the Democrat Party, you have no choice. If you don't do this, you're betraying the very notion of what America is and the ideal of what we represent. If you believe that you are endowed by your creator with certain inalienable rights, if you believe that, you cannot vote for this man or his party. God bless you and God bless the USA.